Am I the asshole for referring to my daughters, 19F, best friend, 19F, as another daughter? Throw away. My only child is currently 19 years old and has a long medical history, due to health complication that have kept her in and out of hospitals. There was a point where she spent more time some years in the hospital more than our home. When her physical health was at the top, her mental health started to plummet when she got back to her life, and she developed depression, social anxiety as well as got diagnosed with BPD. She has a friend, we'll call her A, from Europe. They met online amid those years of lengthy hospital visits and for a long time that was the only person her age she really talked to. They met in real life at a One Direction concert in London we surprised her with for her birthday around 2011. They would speak daily, video chat and play games. Still, she's the only person I've really heard my daughter laugh with except for us. She came over to the US as an exchange student two years ago, and we allowed her to stay with us. She warmed up to us quickly. And she quickly became a part of the family. I brought them fishing and a loved it, made my daughter more interested as well which brought us all even closer. A is a sharp girl, mature, wants to become a nurse. I'm thankful my daughter has her in her life. She helped my daughter in ways my wife and I couldn't. For more context I thought I'd also mention A has had some troubling family history. Her father was an alcoholic and he would treat her mother not so kindly. She has a good relationship with her mother now, and lives with her back in her country, but as for now no contact with her dad since her mother left him. Well, two years has now flown past and they have both graduated. They decided to after graduation attend collage in another country and hence move there, which they are now in the process of. I'm all for it, my wife isn't but I think it'd be great for her, especially having a long. If she was going alone, that'd be another discussion. In a speech at their going away party, I mentioned that it felt strange having my daughter go away to go to collage, and then corrected myself that both of my daughters were. I looked a bit shocked at first, but soon it brought her to tears, and she stood up to hug me. My wife pulled my aside long after and said that it was inappropriate. And that considering A's family history it was also insensitive. I responded with that it didn't seem to bother A, and my wife said it bothered everyone else. I was afraid I'd hurt my daughter's feelings but speaking to her afterwards that wasn't the case. I still fear I said something out of place, it was genuine and not inappropriate to me, but maybe it was for A and I don't want to make it seem like I'm putting myself in her father's shoes. And I can agree with her a little bit, if A said to me I was like a father it would be without a doubt okay and an honor but since it was me saying it I can see how it can be seen as inappropriate. So I'd like some objective opinions about this. Not the asshole. Translation. It bothered your wife. Not the asshole. Sounds like it's very apparent that I helped your bio daughter through what was, hopefully, the toughest part of her life. Finding someone loyal enough to stick by her side like that is enough to make a part of your daughter's found family and it's wonderful you made that connection, too. Claiming A as part of the family in this instance was not inappropriate, nor was the presentation. A is a daughter to you someone you want to look out for and protect and guide. Earning that title should mean a hell of a lot. Not the asshole I can't say that enough not the asshole not the asshole not the asshole. There is the family we are born with and the family we choose. She has chosen you all as family and you have chosen her as yours, as evidenced by the tears and hugs. It was a lovely thing to say, and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Not the asshole. Dude that must have been so nice for a to hear and no one else pulled you aside so they weren't bothered. Not the asshole not the asshole not the asshole and I wish you the best luck with this random redditor. Not the asshole both girls sound fine with it. It also sounds like A has become part of the family, and probably appreciates a loving, stable father figure. NTA I think your wife is overreacting and the only one who felt weird. Where I'm from it's pretty normal to call your child's best friend that is extremely close to the family, a daughter, son. Now if your daughter or her friend had a problem that would be different but they didn't. So I don't see how you did anything wrong. If the people involved aren't mad, insulted. Not the asshole. Not the asshole. A child cannot have too many parents loving them. Your wife probably has some issues she may want to work through. Update. Am I the asshole for kicking my sister and her triplets out of my house when they are in need? Firstly my thanks to everyone who commented when I made my first post, I was feeling really rough about the whole thing and was questioning everything. Your replies helped me sort out my own thoughts at a time when I needed some impartial voices and the cleaning advice offered really helped so thanks. Now the update. My sister and her kids moved into a holiday home on Monday. 
It was the fastest it could be arranged so I ended up letting them stay an additional 24 hours. The insurance is paying for it and it's about a half hour away from here, so local to where we live. She's able to stay there for two weeks in which time her own house will hopefully have had it repairs completed. So far she's managed to keep crayon off the walls but there have been some close calls so I hear. My sister did offer me what I believe to be a sincere apology for her actions and words. I can accept that she didn't mean to cause me difficulties by giving the kids a bath at that time, and I have after consideration forgave her for that part even though the stress of the whole situation has left me in a worse state than I've been in in some years. I did tell her plainly that the part one can't forgive is what she said to my nieces about me that was so degrading and worse parroted by them. I've not spent a lot of time with them since the event. I can't unhear those words and frankly they still haunt me especially when I hear it from a toddler's lips. I've told her it's going to take a lot for her to earn forgiveness for that from me. Which caused another argument about how sensitive I am about my condition and that I should just own it and stop whining and hiding and be a positive example instead. So we are not currently on speaking terms. My mum and other siblings have been pulled into it and all apart from her twin sister are more sympathetic to my point of view or at least to my desire to not flaunt my condition. Even my youngest sister is shocked at her behavior and has vowed to teach the kids better than their mum's example, she babysits them on a semi-regular basis. Her twin is trying to stay neutral and broker peace but I'm trying to stand firm. I love my family but I can't forgive the malice in what she said to my nieces about me. It took my partner and I only about a day to repair, clean after them. We had a few surprises we didn't expect to have to deal with. A few handles on drawers that were damaged, some wet cushions hidden under the bed etc. But nothing that required painting or extensive repairs. Draw handles screwed back on, cushions got washed, walls got scrubbed. To answer the DMS I've had since my post, health-wise I'm okay but not great. I'm probably going to be having a rough time over the next few weeks but it's going to be fine as soon as I get on top of it again. If I've missed something from the update that you wanted to know about, please drop a question in the comments and I'll try and answer as swiftly as I can. Good for you, I'm glad you at least have your home back and some peace of mind you can use the restroom as necessary. As for the rest, hopefully will sort itself out in time. I'm glad to hear that your sister has a place to stay with her kids for now and that you were able to get the house cleaned. I'm also glad that she apologized for the bath timing. Her other comments, however, are degrading and baffling, and it sounds like she's just trying to deflect. She wants you to own it, while at the same time using you as a cautionary tale for children? One that doesn't even work, since it's a medical condition rather than a behavioral one. That's bratty and unkind. I suspect she's embarrassed and doesn't want to admit it, or maybe the type who believes in tough love, but either way. I get why you're currently keeping your distance. Hopefully she'll cool down and wise up. Which caused another argument about how sensitive I am about my condition and that I should just own it and stop whining and hiding and be a positive example instead. That's quite an ironic thing for her to say considering she literally used you and your condition as a negative example to try scare her kids into potty training. Refusing to let her degrade you is owning it. Dot. I'm glad you had the guts to stand up for yourself, and I'm happy your living situation is, presumably, more peaceful. I'm so glad you got your home back. Also, why is it anyone's business about your condition? It can be something simple you just don't want to share, it's no one's place to disclose that unless you do it. I hate people who say just own it or it's not a big deal because to them it isn't, but they aren't the ones living your life. I would be petty and if you know something about her I would say, oh so kind of like when you, and if she said anything back I would tell her to grow up and own it woman shrugging light skin tone. I'm glad you got them out, but I think you should see about therapy a bit. You seem to just brush off people being awful to you, like your sister ignoring your one request about the bathroom and her letting her kids destroy stuff in your house. There's so much disrespect towards you in both posts and you really should think about why you are willing to be treated this way, and what people would do if you treated them the same way. You sound like such a kind, caring person. Don't let people take advantage of that kindness. Wait. So she had the option of staying somewhere else, with insurance paying for it, but chose to bring herself and three kids to a house with one bathroom? Sheesh. Glad to hear it's on the way to being sorted. I totally get why you can't forgive her completely though. If you wanted a little light vengeance a fun idea is kazoos. In fact as she has triplets, maybe a snare drum, a recorder, and a kazoo, pull whistle, she could have the makings of a great band, and I'm sure Neurofen stockholders would thank you.
not the asshole. She should be told about how sensitive she is about criticism of her shitty attitude, and that she should just own it and stop whining and hiding, and be a positive example instead of being the absolute fucktard she is. Peace. Am I the asshole for being completely real with my friend who wants to tattoo me? So I, 25 male, am in the market for some new ink I have an idea in mind just looking for a tattoo artist who has the skills to do the piece. My usual artist moved to another city for better opportunities. I spread the word to my friend group and SM asking if they know anyone, and asked for them to also link me to the artist's portfolio. My one friend, well not really my friend but my girlfriend's friend got in contact with me and said that he's a tattoo artist, and would love to do my piece and at a discounted price too. That honestly made me warier. Good art ain't cheap is my motto for tattoos. So I asked him if he had an Instagram or anywhere I can view his past works and he told me he doesn't really do SM. Don't know why but that made me even more apprehensive. But then just linked me to like, a Google Drive folder. Looked through all his past works and I told him thanks but it appears that he hadn't really done what I was looking for previously but that I appreciated the offer. The piece I'm looking at getting would be a whole shoulder piece expecting to drop a couple of grand to get this done and the center point of the piece has a picture of my mom who had sadly passed earlier this year so looking for an artist who has prior experience doing realistic faces. And to be completely real here he is not a good artist. Like by mainly does small tattoos of like cartoon characters and even those are not too good, like no clean lines and shading is just not good. Even his lettering wasn't anything to be impressed about. He asked me for a reason why and I just said that his previous works weren't really fitting for what I want done to keep it civil you know. But ever since then he or any of his friends or our mutual friends had been going on about that I should just let him do it. Even my girlfriend had been on my ass about this the whole time I just played it cool and just confirmed that it's just not what I'm looking for, it's been like two months they won't let it go. Yesterday, while I was chilling at home after work, doing some more research, my girlfriend comes over with a few of her friends, one of which is the tattoo artist they again tried to convince me that I should let him do it and this is where I may be the asshole so I lost my cool and said, dudes, it's been over a month I already said no, so it's not going to happen. They asked for the specific reason and not just, his style isn't what you're looking for, and in response I said, you want to know the truth? It's because you, speaking to the artist, are not a good artist I looked through your pieces and I honestly feel bad for whoever got you to do them, they're bad my dude ain't no way I'm going to let you permanently mark my body, and I'm sure you can expect what happened next, but shit hit the fan. Everyone is now mad at me saying I took it too far some of my friends say I was right but I shouldn't have said it. So, am I the asshole? Not the asshole they've been hounding you for months to get you to let him do your new piece. My condolences by the way, no good artist would seek out customers in that manner. I would have snapped too if I was being hounded for so long they should have just taken your first, no, and then no hurt feelings. Not the asshole. It's a permanent mark on your body. They shouldn't be so persistent to someone who says it's not what they're looking for. You kept it civil as long as you could. They took it too far, and you put a stop to it. Not the asshole. They drove you to it. Ask your girlfriend if she would get a huge one done by him. Not the asshole they didn't accept your answer and kept pushing, which in itself is a massive red flag for a tattoo artist. The respectable ones will want you to be 100% sure. Don't push for an answer if you can't handle hearing it. Not the asshole. That thing is going to be on your body for the rest of your life you kept it respectful by saying hey not my style but thanks but they pushed you into a corner which wasn't fair. Are they actual tattoo artists or just someone who bought a kit on Amazon? Definitely a difference. You're so, friends are assholes. I have the same policy about cheap tattoos. I would be weary and I would decline. Those people should understand that you want good work, not scratch your work. Not the asshole you tried hard to bow out gracefully and they didn't want to hear it and hounded you. They asked for the real answer and then blew up over it they are ta. Not the asshole. Sounds like he needed to hear the truth. I'd be upset with my girlfriend trying to push me to get tattooed by her friend when she knows it's not what I want. Tell her you will pay for her to get a tattoo done by her friend and see if she agrees. Am I the asshole for calling out my sister for hogging the family car? I'm 38M with two younger sisters. I live on my own and am financially independent, but I don't own a car for practical and ideological reasons I live in a dense urban area and need to drive out of town only rarely. My younger sister is 35 married, and is also financially independent. She and her husband have their own car. She is beside the point for the purpose of this post. 
Now my middle sister is a different story. She's 37, single, lives in our parents' basement rent-free where she also operates her, fairly successful, business. She also owns a car but regularly uses our parents' two cars for convenience they're bigger, they're right there, they all live in the same house, and she doesn't pay the gas. I also get to use those cars but since I don't live there I need to make arrangements to go pick the car up and to coordinate my driving schedule with my parents. As a result, I use their car once every one two months. The rest of the time I take the bus, walk, take a taxi, or rent a car. On this particular occasion we all had to drive to a family event in a remote location with no public transit options. The initial plan was for me to get one of my parents' two cars so that we could all leave whenever we wanted and not have to depend on each other for rides. My middle sister objected, saying she needed my parents' car the morning of the event to drive to the beach because her beach equipment didn't fit, or fit less comfortably, into her own car, and then she could come pick me up afterwards. I said I wanted to drive on my own, and she said I could have the car when she got back from the beach. This was compounded by a few unrelated misunderstandings, resulting in me having to catch a ride with different family members both ways. Granted, I did not put my foot down and kinda relied on several promises that I would get the car in question, and she did leave the car available eventually, though her insistence on using it that morning contributed to the end result me not getting the car. The next day I expressed my disappointment in our family WhatsApp group, not pointing any fingers, several family members had contributed to this chain of events, but saying that I had been promised something that didn't eventually happen. Middle sister responded saying, I freed up the car so that you could have it, to which I responded, why did you say you needed it to begin with? You have your own car, you could drive on your own regardless of what I or other people did. To this she replied, still in the family group chat because there are other considerations which don't concern you. If you had made a few phone calls you would have known that the car was there waiting for you. Am I the asshole for calling her out for basically assuming that our parents' car is hers to use unless she says otherwise? Is she right in arguing that whether or not she uses her own car is none of my business, even when it affects me? Esh. You are all nearly 40 and old enough and financially independent to own your own cars. Stop mooching off your parents. Everyone sucks here you guys are adults, act like it. None of you are entitled to your parents car. Rent one of you need it so badly. My goodness, this post reads like it was written by a 12 year old. Yeah you are the asshole, your sister freed up that car. And why do you absolutely want to use one car per person to go to that event instead of driving up there all together to save gas? I mean you talked about your ideological reasons not to have a car. Info I'm sorry I can't get past the, I don't own a car for ideological reasons, but I am happy to use my parents' car. What, ideological reasons, do you have that do not allow you to own a car, but allow you to borrow one? You are the asshole. Get your own car or don't complain. You are 38 and don't live at home. Also if your sister was using your parents' car then I assume hers was free so why didn't you ask to use that? You are the asshole grow up. You state that you don't own a car because you can, just share, so why didn't you? You could have shared a car w your parents, either sister, or other family. Both of you are entitled to something THT is not yours. Esh. There is a price you have to pay for not having a car of your own. Your parents and sister are not obligated to give you theirs at your beck and call. Couldn't you have rented a car or taken an Uber, Lyft instead? Your sister should stop mooching off your parents and be a little more accommodating of the rest of the family. You are the asshole. Although your middle sister is one as well but not as big an asshole as you. That's why I made the judgment of you are the asshole instead of ESH you're an adult. If you want to use a car then buy your own car. Stop making lame excuses. If you don't want to buy a car, then since you only need to use it rarely, rent one when you need to use one. 